Bonjour, comrade subscribers. Iorana, as they say in Tahiti. Uh, g'day, g'day. So today, what I want to do is try and load software on my Thompson MO6. So the thing with the MO, uh, with the Thompson computers, is that they're similar to the Commodores in that they don't have a. Um, well, if I show the MO5, MO5 is a good. Probably the best example. Grab the MO5. So the MO5, as you can see, doesn't have a built-in cassette recorder. It does have the socket. So we've got the light pen, or the uh, crayon optique, and this is the cassette input. But it doesn't take um, audio. It's expecting a, um, a, a data stream, TTL data stream already. So that's what the accompanying Thompson um, cassette recorder does is it takes the audio, generates the bitstream, so the computer doesn't have to do it. Uh, similar to the Commodore. Um, so that makes it a bit more difficult if I wanted to load software on this. So with all the Soviet, post-Soviet um, machines I've been working on, you just make up the DIN cable and um, hook it up to the computer, play the WAV, and away you go. Not with the Thompson. So there are solutions, um, but they require some work, which I wasn't too happy with. It's like, because the thing is with the MO6, it already has the data set built in. So there should be a way of just, not like we can on the Amstrad CPC 464, you can um, basically hook in and play audio and get the cassette mechanism to convert that to, to data for the computer. So I did ask on the forum, and it doesn't look like anyone's done this. Um, so the solutions I was given is um, you could use one of those fake cassettes, like um, back in the olden days. I've got one somewhere, um, where you know, which has got the the audio cable on it, and you can play you know from your discman into your car stereo system. I actually got one of those for when we got our first Mazda three, two thousand four model. I had um, the cassette player was an optional extra. So I got that, put the fake cassette in, and of course it detected it and wouldn't play it. So there goes that idea. Anyway, so the options were given was one of those, or there's the SDLEP reader. So the SDLEP reader is actually pretty simple. It's essentially just an Arduino, uh, Arduino with an SD card, and uh, some dip switches here. Um, to allow you to select up to one. So you can have 128 files, and you, that's what the dip switches are for. Um, and it basically just reads the data and uh, generates it. So I could do that. Um, so, and I probably will do that for the MO5. Uh, you can see somewhere. Oh, no, it doesn't have a picture. No, it doesn't have a picture connected up to the MO5. But you can see basically here, you've got the, the DIN. For the uh, cassette socket and then we get the power from the uh, light pen socket so that's one option a little bit of work uh, the other option was this um, was basically reproducing what i assume is on here so we've got um, an op amp i guess it's just uh, a comparator maybe so it takes the audio in and then generates either a high or a low uh, coming out so, dum, dum, dum. so I could build that, but again, my, my whole point is that doesn't this already do this? So why do I want to reproduce this when it's already here? So that's what I'm going to try and do today. So this is the uh, cassette player from the, uh, from the MO6. And we've got the, the cable here. So this connects up to the computer. Uh, we've got six pins. Pin one is the blue, up to pin pin six there. So I've got the actual pin out here. Have a look quickly. Here we go. So, yep. So pin one is twelve volts for the motor or for the power supply. Pin two is left channel. So that's audio. That, that's the interesting thing about Thompson cassettes is that apparently they are stereo. You've got uh, one track, which is the data, 
and you've got the other track which is an audio track which is interesting so anyway so that's what pin two is for that's the left track which is audio pin three is ground pin four is data output for the right track pin five is data input for the right track so that's the one we want and um, pin six is motor control okay so looking on the cassette recorder, so we do have a chip here. So this is a um, Motorola 34004, which is, yes, I've done some research, a uh, quad uh, JFET uh, op amp. So there's our op amp. So again, you know, why do I want to reproduce, reproduce this circuit if it's already on here? Uh, looking a bit more. So basically what we're interested in is pin pin five so um, that's pin one so pin five here so that's the that's the input from the cassette to the computer and we also we've got the op amp here so we can have a look I've got the data sheet so I can have a look at that there um, the simplest method that's been done on the Amstrad is basically just hooking the audio input straight up to the heads well um, to yeah wherever the heads connect to so we're going to have a look on here so we've just got a single single head I believe I'm looking at that right where's my got my glasses but yeah basically a single head uh, from what I understand left track is on the outside right track is on the inside so left track is audio so right track so I guess that's the right track there. So having a look at here, we've got four pins. So I assume right track is probably these two here, red and white, which go into this white sheathed cable. And then we have these other two red and white cables here. So that I assume is left track, which is audio. So we're not worried about that. And then we've got the array set here. So the array set here, which is kind of this greenish cable. So they're the three cables we've got going. So I'd say the white cable is the one we want, which I think is right track data. I think this is left track audio, the red one. And then this is the erase. So if we have a look on the back. So the white one goes up to here. So this is where we would hook our 3.5 mil audio into if, if that was going to work um, what else do we have so this here is the erase head and then here this one here would be the audio the left track so I think this is the one we're interested in so I can also hopefully maybe trace this to the op amp and then well maybe ultimately to pin 5 but anyway, so that's what I'm going to try first, is just hooking something in there and seeing if it works. I'll probably have to adjust the volume, obviously, the the, out, the playback level. Um, see if that works. Let's see. This is my first attempt. So, got it connected to ground and this wire here. Um, so looking at the way the Amstrad's been done, we've got the... Uh, Record playhead, oh, there, record playhead there, do that. Um, then we go in, we've got a transistor here, so I guess we boost the signal a bit. Then we've got a um, capacitor, I guess, cut any DC, I don't know, anyway. So this is one point where they will attach the um, audio input um, there. Then we go into one op amp, and then we go into a second op amp. This was another location where they would attach it, but apparently this one is better. And then we go out, data into the computer. So on here, from what I can tell, the op amps on this side are connected through to pin five. So I've been tracing it out and thought, I'll sort it, let's just try. <laughs> Let's just try putting the Y there, putting the Y there. So I think red is record and white is playback, I think. So that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna try. Uh, and then obviously we've got the two tracks left and right, so I 
think this should be the data. But let's see. So I've got that all ready to go. I've converted a T7 file to WAV. I'll uh, put my computer back together and um, give it a go. Uh, so delete all that, um, which you won't see <laughs> because I've deleted all that. Yes, yeah, so I've been fiddling around with it and um, all I'm getting is searching. So if I play it back at 100%, then I do get interference on the screen, like the, the image is broken, broken up. So that's interesting. But I've just noticed one more thing. And you can see it. The play button was, and why doesn't the play button go in? It's because someone's glued the bloody thing. It's glued in place to the metal chassis. So I can get it to play. So when you press play, this lever, lever goes in like that. As you can see now, see the play button hasn't moved? Because it's glued in place. Fucking hell, man. Um, so I'm not, uh, so I'm not sure if that's going to cause problems. I don't know, because I'm just trying to have another look at the at circuit. Let's disconnect that. Disconnect that. Like so. There's this switch here that these uh, um, record and playback heads are kind of connected to there. Um, so there's quite a few little contacts. So I think this is the one that goes in when you press record. So that's why I think maybe this red one here is the record. But I'm just wondering. Um, no, okay, so, so that's the record button here. And this mechanism here, that pushes that switch. So this one, this should be okay. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't move this. That's all right, okay. Anyway, so I've had tried there. It doesn't seem to be working. But I don't think it's that because red is for record. So unless I need to... Unless maybe it's this one. But I think, but th I think this is for the the right track. The right track is the data. Left track is left track is the audio. Anyway, I'll continue continue fiddling. Right, good morning, comrade subscribers. It's now Sunday. I'm not sure how much of the video from Saturday I'm going to keep. Um, I almost got this working by the looks of it. A couple of mistakes I've made. But now, actually, I do have the circuit, uh, the, the schematic, and the layout uh, for the MO6. So yesterday I was relying on the Amstrad one. Whoops. So this is the... This is the Amstrad circuit diagram. Um, and so on that one there, we can put the input after the, um, I guess the preamp, the, well, the, the transistor here. Actually, what do they call it? Do they call it something here? Now, it's slightly different here. So on the Amstrad, we've got a transistor and then we've got a preamp. Whereas on the MO6, we've got a preamp and then a transistor, which is marked as a differentiator. And then the second op amp is used for shaping. So a little bit different on the Amstrad here, but I had zeroed in on the on the transistor. I, I had figured out the transistor, TKO2. Um, but I had placed it, I think, I had placed the input on the collector here. Where is it? So I had placed it on the collector of, of TKO2, whereas I probably should have put it on the base or even on this side of the of the capacitor. 
So there are, so I don't know if these are voltage levels for testing maybe, 5.8 volts, 0 0.8 volts, 3.7 volts maybe, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to try it again today and put it there. Um, so I was close and well the other mistake I made and a big thanks to all the guys on the forums, um, <laughs> I was using the wrong converter. So even though they, there's a, the K7 uh, container format can you be used for both the MO and the TO. The, the computers are incompatible with each other, but they use the same container format. So I was blindly using the um, converter for the TO series, not the MO series. So that was my second mistake. So it might, and maybe actually I'll, I will try it today <laughs> using, actually Daniel uh, on the forums, he's actually got some raw WAV files because it apparently can be a bit tricky with the, um, some of them are copy protected. So converting them from WAV to K7 can be tricky. So he's got some raw WAV files on there. So I might just try one of those first with how I've got it set up. So yes, I don't know, I don't know what, parts of the video I'm going to keep from yesterday. Let me just pull this out. So if I don't keep this part, but yeah, one of the things I noticed is that the play button, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little bit of glue to the metal case. So the play button is fixed in place. It will not move. Um, I don't think that'll affect the operation of what I'm trying to do. So here's my wire here. I think it's connected. Or I think I've got it connected to the collector. That's why I've printed out the. Whoops. So I printed out the um, transistor. Oh, actually, there's a picture here as well it's on the. So I think it's that way. Oh, no, I don't have it on there. That's not the emitter, is it? Which way around is it? Because the emitter goes to ground via resistor. Does it? Yeah, it does. So maybe it's that way around. So yeah, it does look like I've got it connected up to the co uh, collector. There. So I will retry that now using a proper WAV file for the MO <laughs> and um, see if we get any luck. So we should see the, the file header information come up pretty much straight away. Sorry, let me zoom out. Um, yeah, so let me get this all set up. And uh, let's see how we go. All set to go. Start recording on the hard drive recorder. Turn the computer on. Okay. So, so it's, I think this pro, so I'm going to try um, Wave the Tiger. Or was it Wave the Exploding Fist? Wave the Tiger. So, which I think is an MO5, so I'll go that one there. Okay, I've got that all connected up. Now probably, what have I got it set on? I've got it set on 51% playback volume. So I'll go load. Okay, now play on here. Oh, hey, all right. Oh, that worked. Okay. Woohoo. There we go. List. Yeah. Okay. So should I just run it? Am I supposed to keep playing? Okay. Hmm. Maybe, because I know on the Amstrad, the way it works on the Amstrad. It's okay, it's, oh, okay. Cool, it's doing stuff. Cool, on the Amstrad, like if you want to, if it's copy protected or if it's machine code or something, if you just do load, or if it's basic, copy protected basic, you just do load or load, and you can't, I don't think you can run it because you can't list it. So you have to run inverted commas but this seems to be working 
course I can't hear anything. Ah, that's gonna Okay. I don't have any speakers connected up to the recorder. <laughs> that's that's why I can't hear anything. So maybe the recording's gonna have some sound. Okay. Yeah, it's working. Too easy. This is all I wanted to do. Alright. So I'm gonna just leave it how it is, I think. The way of the tiger. So it looks like we're coming up to the end of this first part. Okay. Awesome. Le ensemble de jeu. In time and combat court. court. <laughs> oh, 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 I won't do that. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, won't. <laughs> I won't try the French accent. Uh, clavier, manette. Manette or clavier? I don't know. So, uh, I don't know. So, there are several other parts. Uh, load data. L'ensemble de jour. What is. So, do play de magnetophone. Okay, so we, now we need to load part one, I guess. So, let me just load that up. Okay, okay, okay. Part one. Okay, opening that in Audacity. So, I've got it set at 50%. So 50% seems to be working quite fine. All right, so now I press play again. Ah, that's playing it on, that's, okay. <laughs> uh, cancel. Playing that on my Mac Mini. I'm using my Mac Mini to control my, um, no, I'm using my MacBook to control my Mac Mini. Um, so, no, don't, so because I can't have, because the Mac Mini is connected to the same screen. So I was just doing it on the wrong one. So let me go to the Mac Mini screen. Come on, come on. So part one, I assume it wants, which is here on the Mac Mini. So let's press play. La touche play, okay, chargement. So how long is this? Five minutes fifteen. Okay. So it looks like I'll be back in five minutes, I guess. Let's see. So it's almost finished. And done. Cool. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I am after all that five minutes. I'm getting my ass kicked. <laughs> okay. No, I should probably. Oh, oh, that was A. A is attack. <laughs> can I? Can I? Uh, ah. Looks very spectrum-like, doesn't it? Okay, that's okay. That's C. C is crouch. Did I die or did the other guy die? What the hell's this guy? That's a bit unfair. Stab me in the back. That's A and W. How do I turn around? <laughs> All right, now he's in front of me. But can I get him? Oh, I want to crouch. Do I? No, that's cower. Is it C for cower? How do I do a low punch? Oh, come on, give me a chance, man. All right, let's see. All right, that's all. Oh, that's W. Okay, that's like a low punch, is it? turn around yet. Is that something there? 
Maybe I should have read the manual. This is the way you always did it back in the day when you had a pirated copy. You couldn't look up the... I mean, a backup copy you borrowed off of your friends. You couldn't... Uh... Oh, let's see again. So see, maybe it's all around here. Oh, what's that? That's E. Is that a knife or something? Or what? Is that some sort of chop? I still don't know how to turn around. <laughs> There's a weird, weird extra pixel when I do that chop. Alright, I give up. I, don't, <laughs> I give up. There we go. Le Dieu Quan est de sous de bois. Oh, I don't know. All right, so that was so uh, that was ensemble du jour, du jour. Entrainment. So is that training? Combat core by core. So person on person, or hand by hand or something, with a baton, or samurai, and clavier or manette. All right, I'm going to look that up quickly while I'm here. But um, yeah, okay, it's working. Figured it out. I was so close yesterday, but I just had the wrong wrong format WAF files. I had WAF files for the T06 instead of the MO6. If I just had the MO6 WAF files, um, I would have got it working yesterday. I'm pretty proud of myself. I figured it out without the uh, schematic. All right, now, so at the moment, what I've done is I've just hooked in a, I've just hooked in a, um, just a three and a half mil plug. So what I want to do, wherever that goes. So what I want to do is um, install a socket. So I probably normally I'd put a mono socket, but because it's actually stereo, because it's actually got two tracks, I really should put a stereo socket in, um, and then hook it up. So let me just power this off. So I'll stop recording. Uh, power off. There we go. Stop recording. So I'll capture that later. Let's have another look. So just be careful of the keyboard. Unplug the keyboard. Just unplugging the keyboard cables. Unplug the cassette. Okay. So. Actually, no, I won't worry about. Because I have to figure out probably. I'm not. I don't know. See, because the thing is, this cassette recorder is kind of unusable because the play button is. Um, play button is glued in place. So if I ever wanted to try a proper tape. I'd have to. I'd have to use an external. I'm not. I'm never going to do. It. I'll just. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to. Ultimately, I want to use the SD drive of this anyway. This is just a stopgap until I've got that ready. So, let me get this. So that's where I've got it connected at the moment. So I'll replace that and probably where should I stick the socket? I really should stick the socket on the top board, top case, although I could stick it on the bottom case, um, and then I'm going to have to make it so I can unplug it. All right, let me figure that out, and I'll be back. Okay, let's have a look what panel mount sockets I've got. I've got those, I've got those, I've got those. That's the different types I've got. So this is PCB mount. Those to the side. So I've got these. These okay. It looks like I've got all stereo, which is fine. So I'll just do mono, and I can always add them later. So that's quite simple. So you drill the hole and you push in from outside, and then you secure on the inside with the nut. I've got these ones, which are a little fancier. 
bit smaller. Again, stereo. It's a bit smaller than these ones. Okay, and got these ones here. I'm wondering about the PCB mount one I've got there. It might be. So I've got this one here, which. Okay, I don't know. The case might be a little bit too thick for that one. So that'll be that'll be secure from the inside, which actually might be good because if it's secured from the in well from the outside, sorry, secured from the outside, then I can just unscrew it and pull it out. So that's a possibility. This one is okay. I won't do this one because that's secure from the inside. I might do this one then because this one's also secure from the outside. So I can put it in, secure it from the outside, and if I need to remove it, I can unscrew it and then pull it out. Um, yeah, okay. And the other one is just a PCB mount one. So let's get these out of the way and have a look at the PCB. I'm just thinking I could screw, drill some holes and secure it onto there, but to secure it, you'll want to solder it in, but you also, so this is probably all, all I'll have to, nah. No, nah, okay, no, I won't worry about that. Too much effort. I'll just go for, I think I'll go for these ones here. Yeah, I'll go for one of those. Um, okay, let's get started. So the plan is to basically use this here for the um, for the TV thing. So it would looks like I can just drill out that centre part. That would hold it nicely. And yep, yeah, okay. Sticks in there, and then um, am I going to be fiddling in here anymore after I do this? I wouldn't think so. So do I just want to hook it up directly? So what I can do, because this is this is nicely nice cable, I could just chop it off and connect it up and then put some uh, crapped on tape on here just to hold it down because it was only that was only a quick solder so I could have soldered it a little bit better okay. put that to the side let's go figure out what drill bit I need and drill a hole and then um, again figure out which is left and which is right channel my 5.5 mil drill bit should be enough. Very carefully. Almost there. Almost there. I'm just being very careful because of um, I'm being lazy and not taking the PCB out. <laughs> yeah, just about through. There we go. So that should. It was actually pretty um, pretty thick plastic. Maybe I should have gone six mil. Uh, maybe six mil. Just not fitting. I could probably screw it in actually, but I'll go six mil. Six mil. It's looking pretty good. Nice and clean in there. All right, just just enough to be able to screw on. 
the uh, the nut by the looks of it. Yep, that's enough. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's solder it up, and then um, I'm going to try arkanoid. So that's there isn't a WAV file for that one. It's in K7 format, but I've got the. Uh, I'm going to try the correct MO MO series WAV converter and um, give that a try. So I should have. What I've actually thought I might do is actually I should have made this shorter, <laughs> um, but I can worry about that next time. Is actually just inside the machine, just connect it up like that, and that way I can just unplug it when I want to pull the machine apart again. Um, so yeah, I should have probably made this shorter, but I'll worry about that next time. Um, so yeah, I just buy these in bulk from AliExpress, so sockets and plugs. Makes it much easier, you don't have to worry about having, you know, making that side up. So I just buy them in bulk like this. So I'll make this end shorter. And then just hook it up to the socket like that. So the socket is connected to the side machine and that's just loose. And then I'll just plug that in there. So like, like I said, I'll, um, I should do it now, but I've got it all nice, nicely taped up with crapped on tape. So I'll, um, cause I want to pull it apart again to clean the keyboard. So probably when I do that, I'll sort that wire out. Um, want to get onto other things. So looking at the way the plugs work. So even though I'm using mono, um, so that's left. So the tips left channel, and then we have right channel here if we had it. And then the rest of the sleeve is ground. So the thing is, I believe it was, um, I thought it was right channel that actually had the data. <laughs> so it's actually right channel that, that I would, if I wanted to connect up the stereo again, uh, stereo and have the left and have a proper, using a proper tape. Um, Oh, look, I'm not going to worry about it now. Here we go. So left track is, yeah, left track's the audio. Right track is the data. Um, but the way these work is that, so that'll be just the audio. It won't be the data. But anyway, I'm not going to, probably never going to have a proper Thompson tape. So, all right, let's get this hooked up and back together and see if it still works. It's done. So it ends up that these are actually stereo plugs, but not a problem. Stereo to stereo. So that's the left channel there, so which is red. So I've got I'm soldered it on, got some clear heat shrink. I've got some larger heat shrink to go over the top just to try just to give it more mechanical stability. So I've got a bit of I think this is six mil to go over that, like that. And I've got some eight mil to go over the top of all of it. Hopefully. So, glued heat shrink is the best. So, still a bit warm. I'm just making sure, squeezing the glue, just to make sure it's all kind of hardens I want. But, um, yeah, that's not too bad, is it? So, that'll let me tidy up here. Heat shrink away. Over there. Always remember to use your flux. It makes it so much easier. Okay. Get the flux away, get that away. Turn the soldering iron off. So bring the board back. And it should screw that. Plug into the side there. Screw this on the outside. Put it round the right way. Nope. Those little notches on the outside. Okay. Screw that on. So there we go. So that's that's the internal cable. And um, I really wish I had thought of this before I. 
I'll clean the keyboard up one day soon. And then on the top case, I just basically plug that into that, and I should be should be good to go. So that's um, I probably could. It would be good just to hold this. I might um, for now. I might just uh, use a, um, a cable tie just to hold it there, so that this doesn't move around. Okay, almost done. Finally, let's get this all sorted Final. out. Final kind of view, so cable tie there, cable, and then I've looped up the rest of it, cable tie to the cassette into board to the centre unit, as they call it. So now, turn it over, get the light out of the way, maybe like that, and then connect, connect that, up, that up to there. And connect the well, not that I need to connect it because it's not working. Um, might as well connect it, who knows? Okay, and then I've got to just very carefully connect the cable, uh, connect the keyboard back up. I'll close it all up so that's the that's the uh, connection there. Hopefully, it still works. Keyboard, I never realized this, but. I've got little tabs that pop up, which makes it so much easier. So there's, that one goes in there. Like so, push the tab down. And then this one goes in there. Like so, push the tab down. Done. Um, that's all back together. We're all set to go. Ah, plug the computer into my new socket. Um, start recording. Okay, power on. Okay, so yeah, we want basic. Oh, hang on, no. We'll probably want 28K basic would be all right, but let's just do anyway. MO5 basic. So last time I just did shift load, but like on the Amstrad, I think for these sort of games, uh, professional software, you want to do run like that. Okay, searching, that's what we want. And here we go. Yep, excellent day. Just stop it there, there's a gap there. Okay, let's keep playing. Oh no, that started from the beginning again. Oh, that might confuse it. <laughs> let's see. Alright, gap. Another header. Another bit of data. Oh, elephants upstairs. Okay, yep, right, there's a gap. Okay, so it's the loading screen, another header, and all the data. Oh, the elephant upstairs. Right, so this is, oh, it's not too bad, about three and a half minutes in total. So uh, we'll be back in, we'll be back then. Just about finished. Another 10 or so seconds. Of course, I haven't looked up what the keys are. <laughs> and we're done. Okay. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? <laughs> Very funny, yeah. Voulez-vous les vies infinies? Do we want infinite lives? Oui or non? Um, <laughs> I think I need it. Oui. Uh, Voulez-vous trois... Trois, no, I can't say it. Le tableau de parts. Uh, oui. Quel tableau? Okay, oh, what starting level sort of thing. Oh, do you want to choose what starting level? Okay, all right, maybe starting level two. All right. So, un joyeux, one, one player, maybe. 
and then two is two players. Okay. Appear sur un touche. So press any key maybe. Press a key. Alright, maybe. Ah, oh, one or two player. Okay, one player. Alright, then this is the story. Because sometimes you see a spaceship. I guess in this one you don't. Okay, well, I don't even know what the keys are. Ah, gee. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah, P's pause. Oh, that, ah. All right, space is exit. Oh, you're not going to tell me the whole story again. Can I just... I need to know the keys. So it's, well, please pause, ah, I've got infinite lives, well, it stopped recording, okay, let's start recording again, Discord is full or nearly full, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. I've got too much on the hard drive, on the 160 gigabyte hard drive. Um, well, there we go. It's working. <laughs> That's the basics. I don't know the keys. Um, I've seen better versions of Arkanoid than this. Um, actually, it's, there we go. So, um, yeah, I've seen better versions. So this must be demo. I don't know, maybe. Oh, I don't know what the keys are. It's not the arrow keys. Maybe I have to use the keyboard, uh, the joystick, because nothing is moving that paddle and space exits. How bizarre. Okay, well, that was basically what I wanted to do. I think I've done a pretty good job. I'm pretty chuffed with myself that I figured it out. Um, I've mounted it nicely. Uh, my main mistake yesterday was that I was um, converting the files to WAV format wrong, so that's why it wasn't working. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. <sighs> okay. Um, until next time. Bye for now.